More challenges seem to be mounting at Sapura Energy BHD. This week, the oil and gas outfit saw the departure of its chief financial officer Reza Abdul Rahim. It also sought to delay the submission of its quarterly results. However, its request for a one-month extension to announce its latest quarterly result was rejected by Bursa Malaysia. Sapura Energy is also laden with RM10 bill in debt, which is 10 times bigger than its market capitalization of RM1.82 bill. Market sources also say that Sapura Energy is also looking to consolidate its businesses and is in the process of selling some of its assets. Sapura Energy is in talks with several local ONG service providers for the sale of its assets, which may be non-core to its main business, a source says. Among the potential buyers are said to be TH Heavy Engineering BHD and Icon Offshore BHD. Earlier this year, Sapura Energy saw the departure of its long-standing CEO Tan Sri Sharil Shamsuddin, who retired after leading Sapura Energy since July 2003. It is yet unknown which of its assets are earmarked for sale and the pricing it hopes to get from the exercise. Sapura Energy has yet to respond to Starbizweek's queries at press time. It is worth noting that in March, the group managed to restructure its RM10 bill debt that gave the company breathing space to embark on a turnaround plan. The refinancing also resulted in RM3.1 bill of its short-term debt being reclassified as long-term borrowings. Sapura Energy needs to focus on its core business, which is in the fabrication and engineering, procurement, construction and commissioning, for it to remain competitive, to be cost-efficient and to manage its cash flow, says a market observer. By looking at Sapura Energy's financials, asset monetization would probably help the company free up some capital to finance its massive order book of RM13 bill, and reduce its debt obligations. In February, Sapura Energy had obtained a loan facility of up to RM700 mil from Maybank. Early in November 2019, the company secured a US$135 United States dollars mil facility from CIMB. As of April 30, 2021 the group only had RM570.85 mil in cash in its coffers, with RM10.5 bill worth of debt and total assets of RM23.13 bill. Sapura Energy was once a darling stock among investors with a market value of a staggering RM29 bill. But when the oil price route hit the market in 2014, Sapura Energy was in the midst of an aggressive expansion plan. Hence it was badly hit by the oil price collapse, at a time when its debt stood at RM18 bill. Sharil was replaced by Datuk Anwar Taib, who has more than 30 years experience in the ONG industry having led Petronas upstream business and Shell Malaysia's operations. That resulted in a series of impairments by Sapura Energy that took place from 2017 to 2020. The total impairments done amount to some RM7.22 bill. The year 2019 was also notable for Sapura Energy because it had then carried out a massive rights issue that helped it raise RM4 bill and which resulted in Permodal and Nacional BHD becoming its largest shareholder. PNB, which currently holds 40% in Sapura Energy, had earlier said that the capital injection by the fund was part of a comprehensive restructuring plan that would entail the monetization of Sapura Energy's ENP business and a spin-off of its drilling business. The fund, which was under the helm of Datuk Abdul Rahman Ahmad then, had also said that it believed Sapura Energy's recapitalization plan had presented PNB and all its shareholders with the potential of strong returns. This was given the attractive entry price and the position of the company to benefit from the recovery of the ONG industry. Since then, Sapura Energy has only managed to have its debt size. In addition to its debt woes, it has faced other issues such as the remuneration package of its top management that was questioned by its shareholders PNB and employees Provident Fund. Earlier this year, Sapura Energy saw the departure of its long-standing CEO Tan Sri Sharil Shamsuddin, who retired after leading Sapura Energy since July 2003. He was replaced by Datuk Anwar Taib, who has more than 30 years' experience in the ONG industry having led Petronas upstream business and Shell Malaysia's operations. On a positive note, a July report by Hong Leong Investment Bank Research pointed out that the flurry of drilling contract wins by Sapura Energy was a very positive sign of the recovery of the exploration segment of ONG. The report noted that Sapura Energy has seven active tender drilling rigs, with expectations of the group's strong performance from the drilling segment to continue. In addition, HLIB pointed out that towards this end Sapura Energy has improved its operational efficiencies with operating expenses down 32% year-on-year that will help it capitalize its contract wins. 
We believe Sapura Energy will be in the black from FY22 after being in the red for four consecutive years, it said. Despite the backdrop of improving prospects from new job wins, rising crude oil prices and improving operating efficiency, there is still much that needs to be done at Sapura Energy. T. Key company needs to quickly resolve its cash flow issues and the RM10 bill debt remains a huge drag. Many investors have not forgotten how the 2014 oil price route has affected many local O&G companies, especially those saddled with huge debts to service. It is not known when investors are going to come back to the O&G sector in a big way. This is despite the fact that global oil prices seem to remain at a high, trading above US$70 per barrel this year.